No artificial intelligence was involved in the creation of this episode of The Ron Van Dam Show. As a matter of fact, very little intelligence of any kind is typically involved in the creation of The Ron Van Dam Show. You're listening to Ron Van Dam on New England Broadcasting. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. It's the Ron Van Dam Show. Don't touch me. Hold on tight, things can get a bit weird, if you like that sort of thing. You can listen, but you can't touch. Hey, welcome to the program. It is the Ron Van Dam Show. That's kind of obvious at this point. Thanks for being here. Make yourself comfortable. I will take it from here. This is going to last about 30 minutes of incredible fun and excitement. Doesn't get any better than this, and that's the disappointing part. All right. All right. Settle down. Settle down. Stand down, will you please? <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Thank you. Let me introduce some people that make this show possible. First is a lovely and talented John Shanahan. He's the announcer, comedy writer, does many of the comedy bits, comedy commercials. Comedy is his middle name. Actually, it's not his middle name. I don't know what his middle name is, but it's not, it's not comedy. But it should be. John Shanahan, ladies and gentlemen, give it up. Then there's the exciting and talented, oh my God, Jason Shaw. He does the theme music and performs it for us. And the closing theme and the incidental music, incidentally, Jason Shaw, give it up for him. Nicole Reed is that British voice that you hear beginning of the program. She's not really British, but that's not really the point. She books many of the national interviews that we do on this program because I'm not capable of doing it myself. Then there's other people who sporadically uh, help out on the program. They're not worth mentioning, so let's move on. Oprah Winfrey was supposed to be the guest on today's program, but we forgot to ask her to be on, so I guess that's not going to happen. It's not like she'd say yes anyway. She's very, very busy. I don't know what she does now, but she's very busy. Oprah, if you're listening and you want to come on the program, give me a call. I'll see if we can schedule you, although we're actually very tight here on scheduling, but... Call us anyway. Give it a shot. That's enough of the opening theme comments in the background bit. (laughs) How are you? Welcome. Oh, you're looking good today. Did you shower yesterday? Because you smell nice. Very good. Very good. Obviously, I can't smell you. I'm just feeding the dog, so to speak. Anyway, uh, I think today is Wednesday. What? Thursday? Thursday. Thursday the 13th. Nope, that was yesterday. It was Wednesday the 13th. That's the day you're not supposed to walk under a cat. Today's Thursday. And uh, uh, the Olympic torch, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, the Olympic ch- torch, or the little short, liquid torch. God, it sounds like Trump uh, not, a- not able to speak all of a sudden. Have you listened to Trump recently? Uh, I can't, I can't impersonate him, but he's just, he's starting to slur his words. Uh, uh, that's not a good sign. No, even Biden doesn't do that. Trump will be saying, and I'm and I and I I want to uh, lower taxes and oh my God, call the doctor. Something's wrong with you. You know what? Something's wrong with everybody. I've learned that. 
You know, you, you can pick on Trump, you can pick on Biden. Easier to pick on Trump, actually, but it's not the point. Everybody's got problems, and I mean everybody, and I mean even you. You got problems you don't tell other people about. I know you do. We all have them. And we can all take each other's problems and accentuate them and make them gigantically horrible. But we've all got them. Doesn't matter what age you are. You can be 20. You can be 40. You can be 60. You can be 80. You've got problems. Things that would kind of not let you be who you want to be publicly. No. I don't know why I'm talking like this in a loud whisper. Anyway, the Olympic torch has left Athens. What time did it leave, Ron? Oh, God, stop it. And it's on its way now to Paris, France. Why? Because it's never been to Paris before, and it loves uh, the uh, culture and the museums. Also, that's where the Olympics are going to be taking place this year. Now, we've been so wrapped up in everything else that we fail to remember that the Summer Olympics are happening this particular leap o year. That's right. The summer ones are the ones that take place in the summer, by the way, as opposed to the Winter Olympics that take place basically in the winter. That's how I know the difference. You can't put it past me. When do, you, when do the Olympics... Oh, gosh, you see, I can't talk either. When do, you, when do the Olympics take place? Well, uh, the end of July to the middle of August. I don't know what you're doing then, but most of us, not much. But that's what's going to happen. And that Olympic torch is now on its way. I think they send it by UPS. Not lit, because that would make the package burn. No, there are people, there are actual people that uh, take the torch and run through the streets from Athens to France, which is, that's plausible. You can do that. If the Olympics are taking place in the United States, they have to run the torch from Athens to Los Angeles. That presents some geographical problems, like the torch has to take a plane, Hopefully not Alaska Airlines. That would be a problem. Uh, But the torch is on its way, and that means they have people running. It's like a relay kind of thing, like, um, you know, here comes the torch. Uh, Bob, the torch should be uh, you in about an hour. Then you grab the torch, and you run for about, um, oh, a week or something, and then give it to Anthony. And he's going to run the torch, and uh, I'll give it to Sarah. Sarah's going to run the torch uh, to the border, and then it's going to be picked up by Adeline, and she will run the torch, uh, staying overnight at uh, the Hilton. And then she'll get up and pick up the torch again and give it to Giuseppe. He'll run the torch right into Paris, and then uh, we'll light the uh, that thing. I don't, I don't know how this works. Obviously, I don't know what I'm talking about but I've killed about 10 minutes here, and that's the important part. I don't care for the Olympics. Ron, you don't seem to care for anything. Oh, I do. I do. I'm I'm doing a radio show that's supposed to be theatrically interesting, so if I love everything, it's not going to work out. I have to dislike most things in order to cause a ruckus. But I don't really care for the Olympics, to be honest with you. I think they're a waste of time. Uh, It used to be all these countries getting together in love and spirit of competition in order to uh, meld together in one place. That's what it used to be. Now it's simply drug testing and, oh my God, uh, I hope we win and the other people lose. It's that kind of mentality now. And it's not good. I mean, yeah, you see people from all nations together, but oh my God, please, enough of that. This is not, the world is not set up right now for love and peace. Let's not be a, let's not be ironically uh, uh, ridiculous about this. Love and peace, not so much. If the Olympics actually 
did do love and peace, and the Russians said, all right, we're not going to invade uh, Ukraine uh, for you know during the Olympics because we do love and peace, or we're going to hold off uh, in two years uh, invading Poland. You know, th- that would be okay, I suppose. And the conflict going on in the Middle East, I mean, God, that's been going on forever. And now it's getting just out of hand. Let Can we just stop this bullshit? When I was growing up, there was a peace movement among the, the young people. Yeah, they were hippies. So what? So what? And they were all love and peace. All love and peace. There was even free love. I didn't have to pay for love like I do now. It was free. Ron, you want to have sex? All right, how much is it? It's free this week. I love this generation. (sighs) Yeah, it was love and peace, man. And it was all the younger people, pretty much all of them, pretty much. It was fantastic. And there was a war in Vietnam going on. We didn't like that. Americans were losing their lives. People from all countries were losing losing their lives in various aspects of those squirmishes, which were huge. And the younger generation said, no, stop this. This is absurd. Killing people for, for what? For a disagreement over land or whatever? Or the way that you look or your culture? Um, no, stop this. This this is not why we're on this planet, to uh, destroy each other. That's not what we're doing. And the entire younger generation went for that. Uh, this younger generation, they're on their phones too much. They don't care. Oh, the peace thing? Yeah, there should be peace, I suppose, whatever. Whatever. It's not the same. It's not the same. There's no gigantic movement for peace. There should be. There really should be. Because this is getting out of hand. It wasn't even cute to begin with. Now it's totally out of hand anyway. And are people standing up and saying, no, that's it. No more crap. No more crap here. Russia, pack it up and get the hell out of Ukraine. Israel, Hamas. I mean, smoke a peace pipe, something, something. But no, but no, but really no, and really big but no. The other thing in the news that just um, is interesting, really, to some extent, because of where we are in technology, this is where technology brings us into the wonderful world of problems, it's TikTok. I can't believe I'm saying those words together. That was the sound that a clock made way back. Harmless, the sound of a clock. I hear the clock in the background. What sound does a clock make, Johnny? Tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. <sighs> Someday that's going to be an app. What? I don't know what an app is. That's the sound of a clock. What are you, what, what are you talking about? Yeah, now it's an app. And now it's causing problems. TikTok is supposedly, and yes, run by the Chinese government. That's a communist country. And what they do is they try to gather information on Americans and the American way of life, and they try to influence it so that it's not so free and and democracy anymore. Russia does the same, but they don't have their own app just yet. And then, uh, and of course, Trump says, whoa, this is good. This is good that uh, we're doing Russia and uh, China. It's good, these dictators. This is good stuff. Okay, Don. Don, I know you want to be one, but this is not really the best thing for the country at this time. So the uh, the concern is that the, uh, the Chinese government is um, trying to get information on it. It's a great way of spying because we throw our information onto TikTok. We throw our faces on there. We, we're influenced by the things that are on it because uh, we are influenced by everything. Social media can hypnotize you, influence you, brainwash you, all those fun things that come along with social media. Because <laughs> you see, here's the thing. 
the American people and most of the people across the globe are not smart enough to know the difference between crap and not crap. They don't know the difference. They can easily be brainwashed by something that they love, which can send you an underlying message. Don't you understand? Apparently, most Americans don't. You've got to be on your guard 24-7. You cannot lay down and take it face value anymore. It doesn't work like that. That's the wonderful thing about technology. It's made us more paranoid. Anyway, so the House of Representatives, who, by the way, don't want to fund anything, uh, House of Representatives uh, passed this unanimously almost. The vote was like 200 and something to 63 or something. And they passed it and they said, no, TikTok is uh, nothing but a spy deal by the uh, by the Chinese government because it's run by the Chinese government. And yet um, <laughs> the Republicans are backing Trump who loves the Chinese government and wants to be one. <laughs> so the, the ironic stuff, if you use your brain you, you can figure things out quite easily, but you have to use your brain for that. There are two sides to this argument, and both, unfortunately, are quite valid. Um, there's no question that the Chinese government tries to get as much information on us as possible to influence our elections, our buying habits, and our uh, national security secrets and, uh, and, and the people in them because we splash all our info onto their laps. That's one side of it. The other side is this American thing called freedom of speech, which, by the way, has its limitations. It's not a blanket statement. You can't do everything you want and everything you say. You can't do that. You can't yell fire in a crowded theater, that old thing, because it will hurt people and it will make things chaotic and wrong. Um, so you don't have complete free speech, but, uh, some people are saying, well, if you start banning TikTok, then you're going to start banning, uh, everything, you know, um, banning things where there's a national security problem might not be a bad idea. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, freedom of speech, you know, you want to go on this thing, you pay your money for it. I don't know. Maybe it's free. I have no idea. I'm not on TikTok, that clock thing. I don't know. But, um, you know, you can say what you want. They can say what they want. It's up to you whether you want to accept it or not. Well, yeah, that's not the way it works. Brainwashing is not the way it doesn't work that way. So I see both sides of the coin, freedom of speech versus, um, picking up national security information by, a communist uh, government. Well, what to do, what to do? I say, don't go whole hog on either side. Regulate this TikTok thing. I guess you don't have to get rid of it. I mean, they like TikTok to uh, exist, but not by the Chinese government as uh, as the sole ownership. TikTok says, well, that's not the case. I mean, yeah, it is. Shut up. I wouldn't end TikTok. I would simply regulate it. We regulate a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. You can't just get in a car and drive it down the street. You have to have a driver's license. You have to have certain types of auto insurance. You can't uh, drink out of an open uh, container. You can't drink alcohol while you're driving in your car. I mean, we have restrictions on things. Not everything is free in this country because if it was... It would be pandemonium. So we do have borders here. Do what you want within the borders, but you got to have borders because this is what they call a society. And that's the only way that works. We know that much. So put restrictions on it. You can do that if you want. So that way, okay, I've got my TikTok. At the same time, We're watching it, and we're making sure that it doesn't get in the wrong hands for the wrong reasons. And it is, but we can we can do that. We can put little things on it. That's your that's your medium ground, and that's what this you know what this country used to be. See both sides, find the middle, negotiate, make both sides happy. Neither side is going to be completely happy. 
but both sides will be a little happy, and that's the way democracy is supposed to work. That's what it is. Okay. I've talked enough, and you haven't really said a word through this whole thing, and I appreciate that. I really do. But first, uh, we have a a guest coming up, and uh, a commercial break, uh, so don't go anywhere. Purple Planet uh, has come up with uh, an interesting uh, sponsorship of a uh, theatrical performance that you don't want to miss. Hello, I'm well-known local community theater actor Gordon Flambeau, and I am inviting you to the premiere of my brand new one-man show, These Are My Pants. Over the years, I have never gotten rid of any of the pairs of pants that I've owned. That's right, even since I was a boy. My house is now full of well-preserved pants, and in this enthralling solo piece, I'll take you through my life, one pair of pants at a time. You'll see and hear about my favorite pair of short pants from when I was just a toddler. Experience the thrilling revelation of my first pair of dungarees as a teen, and the hesitant trepidation of putting on a pair of dress pants for the first time. Yes, we'll even go through my wild and crazy corduroy years. Slacks, shorts, cargo pants, oh my goodness, it's a fantastic journey you won't soon forget. Join me, well-known local community theater actor Gordon Flambeau, at the O'Rourke Center for the Performing Arts for These Are My Pants. The show opens this Friday at 7 p.m. and runs as long as anyone's interested. Tickets are $20. I will accept 10, even 5. I hope to see you there. Tony Carvano is head of community engagement at uh, Rivian, and we're talking about the current state of the electronic vehicle, EV for short, for those that don't have time to say that. Um, am I pronouncing everything properly, Tony? You've got, it, you've got it great so far. Oh, boy. Okay, cool. Now, uh, <laughs> there are more electronic vehicles on the road. Uh, are they becoming quite prolific, or is it a, a gentle kind of introduction? Yeah, we, we've seen a wonderful adoption of Rivian's flagship vehicles, uh, a truck and an SUV. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, like you said, uh, EVs or electric vehicles are becoming more popular. And, and some of the reasons we believe that that is uh, the case, um, they are very capable vehicles with great control and stability in driving. Uh, they are spacious, have plenty of storage for your friends and your family and all the things that you need uh, for your everyday adventures. Um, and they're also zero emissions uh, and, and don't require gas right. uh, to power the vehicle. So for those reasons, we see a lot of a, a lot of excitement around the products that we're putting on the road. Um, do they have limitations as far as distance is concerned? Gasoline, of course, there are limitations as well before you have to fill up. Uh, are, are the limitations more uh, or less than, than gasoline? Sure. It really is. A, it really is about the driver. Um, uh-huh. So we're excited to have uh, to offer choice to our owners. Uh, so we have range that goes as high as 400 uh, and approximately oh. 410 miles. Wow. Um, so it really is about the driver and the way that you uh, the way that you sort of push your vehicle. Uh, but fortunately, there's really intelligent software built into the vehicle um, that lets you know when it's time to charge. Uh-huh. And of course, most people, most owners charge by plugging in. Uh, at the end of the day, right. uh, they wake up with uh, with a full tank of charge, if I may. Well, that's what you do with your cell phone, right? Absolutely. Yes, it is. So it's the same thing. All right. I get that. That's a habit, and that's what you do. Uh, now, what happens if you're away on vacation or something like that? Are there charging stations? Uh, I know I see more and more every day. Uh, we're still in the process of making that uh, uh, more into society. Absolutely. So we Rivians are, are accessible on many of the public charging networks uh, across the country, mm-hmm. but we're also very excited to be building out the Rivian Adventure Network. Uh-huh. Um, so that's allowing us to uh, place chargers where we know that many, many of our owners are going to be travel uh-huh. traveling. 
Uh, we have also joined uh, the Tesla supercharging network as well. So uh, throughout the year, we'll roll out more access to owners uh, on that network as uh, also. Right. So we're trying to build that confidence in charging to the point that you made mm-hmm. um, that allows you to get out and go even further from home. I guess it's all about the the uh, the advancement of, of battery capacity. Um, and that seems to be uh, at the forefront as well. It is. I, I think you're absolutely right. And uh, you know, what What we want our owners to know is, again, the charging is really going to cut me. It's, it's going to be informed by the way that the mm-hmm. vehicle talks to you, uh, the way that you build your habits, uh, and the way that you plan. Mm-hmm. Uh, for those that have not been in an EV, I, I had the opportunity to be in one as a guest, and uh, it was like a whole different experience, like being on a train, an electric train, where there's, <laughs> it's just silent and there's no... It's like there's no, there's no moving parts. I'm sure there are. I'm sure the tires spin, but I mean, it was like, it was like, wow, this is incredibly quiet and peaceful. This is pretty cool. I mean, you know, they talk about cabin experience. This goes beyond it, doesn't it? I think that's right. Uh, you know, it, it is quiet in the vehicles. Um, you know, uh, you're able to uh, really experience the world around you, yeah. uh, which I think is important for us today. Uh, but also, uh, you know, the vehicle requires a whole lot less service. Um, so there's a lot less uh, thought that you have to put into your daily ownership experience. Uh, uh, and again, I think our owners are very excited about that. Is there a place that we can go to experience this? Because some people say that when they get a taste of it, then they want it. Uh, where do you go to, to get that feeling? Yeah, sure. So, so the best place to go is to Rivian.com. Uh, that will give you a chance to sign up for a demo drive uh, in the nearest area. Oh, good. Uh, and that, that's one of the best things to do is to get behind the wheel of these vehicles. Again, the driving experience itself uh, is something that, that's remarkable and something to remember. Now, there are, there are various models uh, out on the market now, uh, not as many as, as the, the competitor or dinosaurs, but there are some out. Uh, what sets uh, this this particular electronic vehicle vehicle apart from the others? Sure. So what I think sets Rivian apart is the fact that uh, you know we built vehicles that allow you to explore the places that you, you know, that you love, the places that your friends love. Um, again, focusing on the zero emissions uh, means that we have more storage in the vehicles to mm-hmm. get you to really fun places or to those morning adventures, which might just be waking up and getting your kids yeah. uh, to to school on time. But we thought about these uh, about the the ownership experience and built those things from the ground up. So that's buying the vehicle, driving the vehicle, charging the vehicle. Yeah. Um, you would buy this as simply as hopping on your phone or computer. Uh, we really want to simplify uh-huh. uh, those parts of the ownership experience. Great. Um, the design of the of the of the vehicle also uh, puts in mind what you might be doing every day mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. Uh, and so we think the versatility uh, allows you to do a lot more. Yeah. At the very least, um, most most families are two car families. I mean, you know, that's where we are. And uh, you'll find that a lot of uh, families are going for the fairly local area, you know, within a 40-mile radius, less. uh, And they use that every day and still have plenty to spare. And uh, so that's how it seems to be uh, getting integrated into our society. Yes, I think that's fair. Um, uh, We also see a lot of really exciting road trips. Mm -hmm. Um, Yesterday during R2's launch, uh, we saw many of our Rivian owners that drove in from states away from California uh, to be present and to participate uh, in uh, in the inception of that vehicle and, and sort of the, the reveal of R2. Fun. Fun stuff. That's the future, though, isn't it, uh, Tony? There's no way around that. That's the future. It is, and we're excited to be a part of it. Excellent. So how do we get more information? Absolutely. So I, I think uh, really quickly, uh, Rivian.com backslash R2. You can be one of the first people to reserve R2, uh, a vehicle that is going to be a five-seat uh, SUV mid- on our mid-size platform mm-hmm. uh, with really, really cool features that allow you to live your life every day, whether that's pushing yourself to go surf early in the morning to head to, at the beach, uh, heading out with your kids uh, to soccer practice. So we're excited for folks to take a look at the website. Very good. Hey, thanks for your time today, Tony. 
Well, that'll do it for today. Thank you to you. Thank you to my guest. I'll be back again tomorrow with a brand new program. I will. Oh, yes. Oh, I will. Oh, I will. But until that time arrives, I wish you peace.